Welcome to Outlier On Air. Today we are in Draper, Utah at the office of Monkey Ops with Omar, Eddie, and Hector. Thank you so much for welcoming us in. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having us. So you have Monkey Ops and also Instasize, is that right? That's mm -hmm. correct. Okay, so Instasize is how you started, mm -hmm. right? And Instasize is, please tell me about that app. So basically, that was the first idea we had and it was really, really quick. We were like, we were saying, we tried to think of something to do, we had no idea what to do. We decided to, maybe let's try mobile apps. And then he's like, well, what? And then I'm like, well, what's the problem with Instagram? You can't fit your entire photo on Instagram because it makes you profit. So how about we create a way to put your entire photo? He's like, well, what are we gonna call it? I'm like, Instasize, and bam. It was that easy. We just, that's how we started. So were you coders to begin with? No, we weren't, we just, uh, I was going to business school, he was going to business school, and Hector was going to medical school. Okay. And uh, we kind of just decided, hey, we want to create our own business, and just went from there. Like, okay, so how long ago was that? That was back in like October 2012, when we started talking about the idea. Okay, and so at that point, did you drop out of school? No, 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 I'm sorry, we dropped out, I dropped out of school in January of that year. Okay. And he finished. And you finished, finished school? Yeah, I finished that December. So I just went to school the rest of the year. Okay. And then finished. And then I, I joined them because we got we had a we got this office October 2013, and then I joined them full time in the office uh, December. Okay. And we got this place. And basically, we'll we'll look at this office in a bonus video walkthrough on OutlierMagazine.co, and you'll see that it's just. It's really a pretty uh, cozy little workspace that you're renting out of a much larger building. Yeah, Beautiful really. building. It's very spacious. <laughs> yeah, the building's very spacious, <laughs> but yeah, you, well, you've made great use of your space, but you basically have three computers right next to each other and this beautiful couch and whiteboard, which is fantastic. Yeah. But um, how, how much are you paying for this space? Uh, not that bad. It's probably like 800. Really? Yeah, 850 a month. Okay. And it's in a beautiful location in the southern part of the valley of Salt Lake City. Right, yeah, it's right up the freeway, so it's easy yeah. access okay. to the freeway. So how did it start? Were you, did you go and rent office space right away, or how did you build that up? Uh, well, no, well, I mean, I know we all had, at least at one point, had our, had our MacBooks, and um, we would meet up at each of those houses, and then we started moving into coffee shops. And then Eddie and, Eddie and Hector actually worked at a software company, and they would work, actually they would, most of the time, instead of working, they were actually working on the business <laughs> wow. itself. And they can tell you a little bit about, about that as well. Yeah. So at what point did you learn to code? Are you doing all the coding, uh, first of all? No. You're not doing the coding, you're doing the business, managing the business, okay. Yeah. So are you outsourcing overseas for coding? Uh, no, we actually have developers here in the States. Oh, you do, yeah. okay. Yeah. But you are outsourcing. Yeah, well okay. they're full-time employees now. Are they, yeah. okay. We actually um, started, the first iteration of Instasize, we yeah. went the, the cheap route, right? Because you have no money. So, right. How'd you so do that? we just went on those freelance websites and said, hey, we need an app to do this. Mm -hmm. Found a guy in India, he built it for us, and then. How was it? It worked good. Well, <laughs> it was, it was good for what we wanted, like, okay. you know what I mean? It was fine. Super okay. cheap. But, and so we got it out, and then after that, we're like, okay, we need, let's, we need to somehow expand this and make this bigger. Mm -hmm. So then we had to eventually move to someone who was more capable, faster, and someone who could, I guess, work on our time and the way we wanted. So, so were you at that point making Instasize better or were you moving on to other app products? Uh, making Instasize better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So that's been a progression of, what, a year, year and a half? Uh, yeah, almost two years. It's almost two years. Almost two years in November. Okay, yeah. and yeah. so, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the first concept that we initially had is just the resizing feature, and it would just switch the background of, of, of the picture you have on it, black or white, and then we slowly started adding more borders, uh, mm -hmm. moved to collage, um, then we moved it from iOS into Android, uh, now, and now into Windows, but it just slowly has progressed over time, of just kind of listening to our, you know, what our, what our users want, yeah. and paying attention to, you know, you know, okay. That we get, so. so, can you tell me how much it cost for you to create that first iteration? Yeah, it was, it was like six hundred and fifty. Yeah. So six hundred and fifty dollars. And for us, that was like, that's, oh gosh, was a, well, wow! Yeah. In the app world, I mean, that's so cheap, right? Yeah, but to us, yeah, we were like, 
<laughs> but that's a great MVP. You were proud of it, obviously. Yeah, but that's definitely. great. I mean, that's a that's a low investment for that that kind of product, that industry, and you created this minimum viable product, I assume. Mm -hmm. And then did it start to gain traction right away, or yeah. it did? Yeah. Uh, well, no. Like it. I mean, I remember our first our first version that we had out. I mean, we only I think the first day we only had like 500 downloads, um, and then we were kind of just. The first day you had 500 downloads? Yeah, the first day. Yeah. That doesn't seem bad to no, me. I thought it was like, I was stoked. Well, I guess compared <laughs> to what we have now, it's, it's, it's Okay, which is a ton, I'm sure. But uh, how, how many downloads do you have now, can you check? Uh, per day, or how do you measure I mean, that? Right now, they're probably like 18 million across all platforms, I would say. Wow. That's iOS, Android, and Windows. 18 million, including me and my brother. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So when did you start venturing into other apps? Um, actually, we we started not too long ago. We've we've always made Instasize our focus, mm -hmm. but we have like we come up with other ideas and we want to test other things. So we're always constantly like talking about, well, what about this problem or this thing or what? How does this sound cool? Like we just always are always thinking of something, okay. and sometimes we like to like see how far we can go with it. Yeah. So yeah, like. Like right now, some of the things we're doing is uh, we've talked a lot about like if emailing is still cool in the future, you know, stuff like that. We talk about um, uh, notifications, like how that will be affecting in the future, like just. So you're always exploring these future yeah. trends. How do we think things are going to go, and where are the opportunities? So are you always creating your own products, or are you developing apps for other people now? No, we're still okay. doing this for ourselves. Okay. What are some of the other products that you're working on or have launched? Um, well, we launched Instasize Video. Okay. It's the same thing, but for video. Oh, cool. Um, we've launched this uh, app called Train Smart. It's for working out. It tracks your times working out, you know, workout times. Hmm. And, and also, we launched what else? Well, that we also have. Uh, Flappy Bird. Yeah, we, we, you know, the, you guys heard of the Flappy Bird? Flappy Bird? Yeah, the big old craze that the guy, the guy made this, the app that the bird goes through the pipes. Oh, okay. But we're like, yeah, let's see if we can yes. try to make this. So we did, and then we just put it in the store, and we just, it's just sitting there, but we just mm -hmm. mainly did it just to see if we could do it. So but, you're always exploring. Yeah, but like right now, some of the things we're looking into, um, like I'm working with one of the interns is uh, a notification app, which pretty much we're trying to make notifications more towards, I guess, real life situations and like try to open up things that typically you wouldn't receive notifications for. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, say you go to Nordstrom, right? And you want to find out when's the next time Nordstrom's going to have a sale. So let's say Nordstrom gives you a way to receive a notification from them. Well, other then, than email. Other than email versus like these, this would be a, I guess a new way to receive stuff on the fly. So then Nordstrom, you become a subscriber, and then now Nordstrom has a connection with you to send you future emails, future things. Also works, right now we're mainly using it for news. Okay. It's so like Mac Rumors, I'm getting notifications all the time when Mac mm -hmm. Rumors is showing up, or like Fox News or something. So that's how we're pretty much testing it. We're trying to expand it to other use cases, like, okay. like clothing, like uh, eating out, stuff like that. So is it launched? Is no, it it's, we're still working on it. What's the name of it? I don't know yet. <laughs> oh, so tell me about the monetization here. Um, so you put $650 into it in the beginning. How long did it take to make money and how are you making money on this app, on Instasize? Well, we're making money through ads. Okay. And we actually became pretty profitable. I mean, not pretty, profitable pretty quick. I think it was like a month after we launched. How are you placing the ads? Do you have to negotiate directly with your advertisers or do you go through? We go through uh, Mopub. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of them. Mopub? And we have okay. like other specific advertisers that they uh, buy directly from us, like mm -hmm. Open Media Works. And they uh, yeah, they just buy it from us and then we place the banner in the bottom mm -hmm. and then a full screen ad when they hit share. Is that easy to set up for our other app developers out there? Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's pretty typical practice. Like yeah. people they use. Like many of these big providers like Mopub, uh, Google, and yeah. so forth, they have like SDKs and they allow you to place banner ads, full video ads, full interstitial ads. So yeah, it's, pre it's pretty normal. Hey there, outlier entrepreneurs. I hope you're enjoying our guest today. 
I don't know about you, but I am obsessed with learning from others who are completely crushing it in their business. As entrepreneurs, we want to give you even more interactions to our guests, experts, investors, and other insanely ambitious entrepreneurs. We've just opened 50 spots for the Outlier Mastermind. This is a tight-knit community that offers you complete support through a closed Facebook group. You'll have an accountability partner and the opportunity to participate in business building activities together, which will accelerate your progress toward that next huge goal. We'll have exclusive hangouts and trainings with experts and successful entrepreneurs, as well as direct access to the Outlier team. If you're completely dedicated to your business and are ready to turbocharge your success, go to outliermagazine.co to learn more today. So from the time that you actually had the first app in hand, put it out there on the app store to the time that you actually started to receive revenue, how long was that? Well, we received it. Same day. Really? It was, it was like 10 cents, but... But you weren't charging for the app, right? You started with ads right away, like yeah. from the get-go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as, like... Because they base it off of, like, every thousand sessions okay. or impressions, you'll start getting, like, pennies on it. So there's a low barrier of entry there. Is there a downside to doing that? To ads? To putting, yeah, to putting the ads in there? Um, some people complain about ads. Yeah. Do you do a, a premium model without ads? We do, but, like, how we do it is we offer all their features for free. Uh-huh. So, I mean, it's a good return for the user, like, hey, you got some okay. of your ads, but we give you everything for free. Oh, okay. If there's an ad free, they can pay. Do very many ads. people do that? Yeah. Really? Um, I, that's pretty good. What What do you charge for that? Uh, Two ninety nine, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. So is that your uh, your principal income source, Insta Size? Mm -hmm. Are you doing Are you receiving income from any of your other apps at this point? It's very like it's not even close to what Insta Size is. But yeah, we pretty much go with the, I guess, the YouTube approach. Like, everyone loves YouTube. Everyone wants to see the videos on YouTube. Yeah. So we kind of want to give everything that people want with the ask in return, hey, help us keep funding yeah. by doing these ads. Yep. How much work did it take to actually get noticed in the App Store? I mean, it sounds to me like you just threw it out there and people started to come the same day. I mean, did you have to do any work to try and get that app yeah. seen? Yeah. And what did you do? Yeah, yeah well, you okay? Well, because we like to keep things, so it's not a big a secret. I'll give you a second. Go ahead, let me know what you can do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Go okay. ahead. That's cool with it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's so, fine. So, so like, cool. in the very beginning, what we did was we searched on Twitter, mm -hmm. people that hate cropping on Instagram, and we just tweeted them out 24 hours a day. Last week. Like, like, <laughs> like you, you tagged their name on oh all gosh. these posts. Oh, yeah, we just, we make fake Twitter accounts and just, like, blast them. Hey, yeah. down, side, down, side, down, down, <laughs> side. I would wake up at 3, in the morning, three or 4 in the morning and just, Tweet them. And just really? Cool, Did you like you load up your buffer or something like that, or you just, just, you just, yeah, just search it, it right away? Yeah. yeah, we would search it. Like we would keep, cause we would keep track of like, okay, who was the last person that you tweeted at this time? So then like the next person that would come in, start tweeting those people. Yeah. And just, yeah. We and were you pointing them there. to the App Store or yeah. Google Play? Uh, or? We we learned from yeah. the get go, cause like you couldn't use quotations, cause people would spam you, or you couldn't use links in your tweets, cause then they would report you as spam. So then we would just say, hey, download Instasize. And, oh, they just yeah. go look at it. Yeah. yeah. Go look at it. Is, that, is that the main uh, yeah. thing that you we did? Believe yeah. that's, that's we believe that's kind of a, yeah. one of the factors. How many tweets do you think you sent? Uh, it's probably like four or 5,000 a day. A day? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. So all three of us just like, you just like hung out at Starbucks and just tweeted yeah. forever. Just whenever. Yeah. Just, we, all the time when you just had your phone. Wow. Yeah, it is. So there's you're getting interaction from that. Yeah. yeah. There is something to be said, you know, in being in social media to targeting, you know, targeting those that have that need or have, you, you mentioned that you found people that had that problem somehow in their tweets, they'd indicated that. Yeah. So you can target people that way. Is that, do you still do that for your apps that you're Sometimes when we're like trying to search for new ideas, we'll tend to like, you know, I need, I want, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. go through this feed to see if there's anything that catches our eye. But now you've got some momentum, yeah. and now you're just working on making a better product. Exactly. Is, are there are there other competitors that are doing this exact same thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. There's, there's a few yeah. actually, and a few that actually take our name. Oh really? Yeah, and it's kind of. What do you do about that? 
There's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, like, you can file a complaint with Apple saying that, you know, they're using your, your keyword or your app name. Mm. And basically, they, they, like, send a CC, or they CC you on an email to them, kind of like a, a legal type mm -hmm. email, but not really. But about, I would say, like, about 70% of the time, they'll, they'll change the name and change the keyword. But for the most part, they, they So there can be two apps with the same name in the app store? Well, not, well, to, not, not technically the exact same. Something but just a little bit. They yeah. like it's a size plus yeah. or something, and then. Yeah. Sure. But to us, they're trying to say this. We're trying to, like we've had even people who don't even have the name exercise would say, "Oh, now you can exercise your photo." And uh -huh. we're like, Hold up! Yeah. We're like we came up with this word. <laughs> <laughs> That's you can't, be, you can't be saying this on to other people. We're the ones who thought of this. Right. And then they even come back at us and say, "You didn't think of this. This is common knowledge." Like, no, no, no. <laughs> this is what we thought of. This is our name. Right. But yeah. So that's one of the pains yeah. of the uh, market. So apps are are huge. I mean, so many people want to have a successful app. They can just taste it. Everyone's got ten app ideas. I guarantee you, everyone right. in this room has ten app ideas. So what is your? I mean, it sounds to me like you just came up with an idea and rolled with it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything before that? Any ideas that didn't work, or was this just like a lucky strike? Well, yeah, as far as apps, good. well, as far as apps, no. But we had plenty of other ideas that we failed miserably. Like we had a toothbrush and subscription idea. A and toothbrushing Netflix. subscription. Yeah, so you pay monthly and we send you toothbrushes. Oh, really? Yeah. So you know, like people work. every three months change a toothbrush. That's that's way different than yeah. app. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then, like we had a what a take down Yelp. Yeah. Take yeah. down Yelp. Yeah. Yeah. With the review site. Yeah, but you know, and, yeah, it just didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, so. like table reservations, all this like trying to think of all this stuff, but and we just, never thought of apps, and then we finally thought of apps, and I guess what you learn was. Keep it simple. Like Instasize was one function app versus all these other mm -hmm. huge that are doing a ton of things. Yeah, it's like, and if you look at it, like everything that's big now wasn't big out when it started, or wasn't the same as when it started. It seems like an overnight success a lot of times. Yeah, but like if you look at like, like if you look at Google when Google first started, Google was just a search engine with a good algorithm. Right. So, but now it's like. A, go a place where you can go buy ads, a place where yeah, it does everything. <laughs> like, but it just starts off with being one thing it's really good at, and then yeah. it just keeps folding. That's how Instasize is. It was good at doing the problem, but now we're like, hey, let's do this as well, let's do this as well. Right. Just trying to get, I guess, broaden your, the size of your, mar of your market. Yeah. How do you know when it's not working and to abandon that idea and to go into a different app idea or other idea? Um. I guess when you start like not getting any downloads. Yeah, <laughs> one and two downloads a day, you're like, okay. So you've had a couple apps like that, and then we're just like, well, you shouldn't put so much focus on it if you're just gonna. So you struck a chord and you knew it from the beginning. So yeah. that's pretty important. For those who are creating apps and wanting to go this route um, and would like to know what the earning um, capability is, can you share with us? something about what you've seen in revenues. I know that you can't share your exact revenues you mentioned, but can you give us an idea of what the capabilities are or what you've experienced in some way? Yeah, um, it's very, very hard. Like, as they say, there's over, there's almost over a million apps in each app store. Yeah. So like the odds of your app being favored versus another app is very hard. Yeah. So I guess like when you make an app, make sure your app is something people want. Like make sure it's it's actually solving a problem. Like don't make a calculator app because yours is gonna be cooler. Like <laughs> like make it because this there's a problem with other apps. Or there's a problem with something that's not there. And then also I think I think like like there was this like the article just recently, right? Yeah, you should be asking I can send you guys a link if you want. <laughs> Please but, but yeah, but it says, put it on the show notes page. I think less than I think one point six percent makes more than five hundred thousand dollars Month? I think there's like 80% of the apps in the app store are zombie apps, which means like no one uses them. Okay. And then like 2%, like he said, are the ones that are making the most are money. Are making money. Those are like the biggest two. How much money are they making? Like what's the rev? What's They're the saying over $500,000 a month. That's what I don't know. A day. A day? A day? Like the top, top 1%. Uh, they're the top, top apps. The like like huge apps. And the top 2% are making like 10000 a day or something. Are like these that. small? Uh, organizations like yours, three guys, um, or are these bigger, you know, do it all apps. It's pretty sure there's, there's, there's small ones. I mean, you, there's, are you guys anywhere close to that? 
Um, we're in there. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Where? So you're gonna pay for our dinner. <laughs> Take you guys to coffee. If you want. <laughs> First of all, congratulations! Here, That's here. amazing. I love hearing a story like that because it is a huge struggle. We run into so many people that have, you know, we actually on the Outlier um, founder team have app developers that have been around since the beginning of mobile and have seen it all. And it can be a tough business. Yeah. yeah. So for those who are jumping in, what advice do you have? Just keep trying. Keep like, thinking. And also, like a lot of people are going to get discouraged because they don't get that first you know, great hit, but you gotta keep trying because not everything comes easy. Like, our first app was great, right? But we had plenty of other ideas that didn't work out. Right. We just kept trying. And find a need, don't just find something that you like. Yeah. Find what the market wants. Find the need, okay. No more? Mm. Uh, I mean, my thing is just like keeping the concept simple. I mean, when you, you know, when you're trying to showcase like, this product that has so many like different features, I don't think it really gets into it. Like, yeah. Just my advice is just keep it simple. Yeah, agree. And make it pretty. Yeah. Make it pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, this guy's all about design. <laughs> <laughs> don't make it ugly. If you make it ugly, no one's gonna no one's gonna want to see it. <laughs> Great point. So I also want to know what each of your roles are and how you complement each other and and this. I know you're all buddies and you have been for a long time. Is that enough to create a company together or how do you run this? Um, Who's in charge here? I think All of you? I feel like we have a lot of like shared roles. Because okay. like if you if you look at iOS, it's mostly Hector that, that heads it, but he'll get help from me and Eddie. And then Android recently, Eddie usually ch tends to take over because he, he's the one that mostly react, you know, interacts with the okay. head developer of Android. And then me recently, I took over Windows, which is a big market. So you each have a platform. Yeah, we, mm. That's good. Each other and everything. But it's always like, oh, don't touch my iOS app. It's not like that. It's like, it's like, oh, what are we doing for iOS? And then like, I, I criticize I, Android as much as he he'll criticize iOS. And it's like, mm -hmm. we just care about every other app. Like we we're not like, separate and, I guess departments. It's, we all just worry about getting things done together. Right. And just making sure it gets yeah, done. I think it's cool that we don't see each other as one person bigger than the other. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like. Just want to make something mm -hmm. cool. And yeah. Just, even when even when we're working, we're like our desks are literally like this. We're just you know rubbing shoulders all day. It's kind of a good thing, I guess, to be in such a small office. <laughs> yeah. It makes you like <laughs> you like it, each other. Okay. You yeah. have to like each other. <laughs> you can't. But yeah, like if you got an idea, if you got something to say, you just say it right there instead of like it's a different vibe than say from. A more corporate structure here. Yeah. It's like, like outside. When, when you got something to say, right you outside say the it. door, there's all these corporate guys working, and you guys are like, hey. Yeah. yeah. There's no leader. Well, I guess we're leaders together, but there's no like one guy topples the other. It's just yeah. he, if he has something important to say and he feels it's important, and we have, we should listen, but it's also we should criticize just as much as how why he feels important. It's pretty much. It's like we argue, but we argue for a common good. Sure, sounds familiar. I think we were up till 2 a.m. last night doing something familiar. <laughs> so, what's the, what's the key to a healthy partnership? Is that it? I don't know. I guess it's, yeah. It's, it's open communication. Yeah, listen as much as you want to talk. <laughs> That's a good one, open communication. <laughs> and just try to eliminate ego. That's where like most people fail, is they, they want to be that guy, like, yeah. instead of just having one great team. Great point, great point. Well, we appreciate all these great takeaways. This is really going to help a lot of our entrepreneurs from around the world that are trying to do something similar or feeling some of the same, you know, desires to do some of the same things. So we appreciate that. Where do we find you online? You've got a really cool website that we want our people to check out. Yeah, so it's uh, monkey.co, M-U-N-K-E dot C-O. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter. The real Insta account. Size. Give us the real account name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just playing it. <laughs> so it's InstaSize, at InstaSize, uh, and then there's at Monkey Apps. Um, and on Instagram. Or Instagram, Instagram. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, that's InstaSize as well on Instagram. Great. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, Join you. us at outliermagazine.co for the walkthrough of this fantastic space and to see how <laughs> Monkey ticks behind the scenes.